This is Getting On With Life, Biblical Wisdom for Successful Christian Living. And this lesson is Making Plans. Most of us make plans for our future. We tend to want some direction for what we are doing and why we are doing it. In our early years, we may have plans about our study and what career we will pursue. When we fall in love, we make all kinds of plans for a happy life with our beloved. We make plans for getting assets, enjoying various experiences, going places, making our fortune, getting ahead in life, and so on. Plans are good. Wise plans, well executed, should lead to good outcomes. That involves such things as taking stock of our resources and capacities. In Luke 15, 28 to 30, Jesus said, When a man intends to build a tower, doesn't he sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Otherwise, after laying foundation but not able to finish, all who see it mock him, saying, This man could not finish what he started to build. However, the Bible warns that success is not a product of our plans, but of God's blessing on our lives. We can make all the plans we want, but there are many things completely out of our control. James 4, 13 and 14 says, I challenge you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a vapor that appears for a little while, then vanishes. An example of this foolishness is the rich man who had another bumper crop. He made plans to pull down his barns and build bigger ones. That was a perfectly reasonable plan in human terms, but it missed out on unseen things that were more important. Luke twelve seventeen to 20 says, What will I do to store my crops? I will pull down my barns and build bigger to store all my fruits and goods. I will tell myself, You have plenty stored for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said, You fool! This very night your life is required of you. Then who will own your goods? Making plans without making room for God is foolishness. We can feel as confident as we like, and we can have all the evidence of success, but there are things which God controls that we have no power over, such as circumstances, and also our very lives. Making plans is wise and good, but those plans must include God. We must live our life and make our plans in the fear of God, and with due respect for the role God plays in our lives and in our world. King Solomon reflected on that and realized that human plans and human prowess aren't the end of the story. Things don't go as we expect. In Ecclesiastes 9.11 he says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race does not always go to the fastest, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill. Instead, time and chance happen to them all. The very best plans you can make are to have God's favor and blessing on your life. That is done by living your life humbly before God, worshiping Him, and doing all He asks of you. Psalm 127 verse 1 warns us, Unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers work in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. God can open doors that are shut, and close doors that seem wide open. So being led by God means you can find your way into things outside your best planning. A young friend who loved horses attended a sale, sensing God would let her buy a horse. She had limited money, so could not buy the better quality horses on sale. One horse was available cheap, because no one wanted it. The horse was irritable and wouldn't allow people near it so was not a good horse for those planning to ride it. The young lady kept being drawn back to this cheap horse, but was uncertain about the troubles she could be buying. She bought the horse and soon discovered it was due to give birth. After birthing her foal, the horse settled into a lovely, quiet horse. So the cheapest horse at the sale turned out to be the best buy, two for the price of one. That's not a product of planning, but of being blessed and being willing to follow the prompting of God. Over the years, I developed a way of describing my journey as stumbling forward. I haven't managed to make wonderful plans and see them through, like others have, 
I often stumble toward what God seems to be prompting, and when I trip, that tends to lurch me even further forward. It doesn't look very impressive, but it has led me into wonderful things that I would never have expected. I can't guarantee what will happen in your life, but I can assure you it is wise to be making plans. And I can assure you even more confidently that having God in your life and God's blessing on all you do is better than any planning you can ever do. So make your plans, but hold them lightly. Trust in God, and don't panic when your plans are interrupted. Listen carefully for the leading of God's Holy Spirit, and let God get you to things you aren't looking for, but which may turn out to be a much richer blessing than what others are buying into. Catch my post on the Jacuzzi Blessing as it reinforces what I'm saying here. Plan to have God at the center of all you do, waiting on Him and trusting Him in all your thoughts. Then expect God to bless all you set your hand to supernaturally. And may the Lord richly bless you as you look to God for His guidance while making plans. God bless you.